many students are intimidated by the idea of accenting nouns. Uh, the noun, the accent on a noun seems to shift around uh, from one syllable to another, from a circumflex to an acute. Uh, hopefully this lesson will, will take some of the mystery out of accenting nouns. Uh, the thing you need to remember about, and, and we'll focus on first declension nouns here, but uh, these rules will apply generally to the other nouns too, particularly the second declension. Uh, so the, the thing to remember is that an accent on a noun is persistent. Wherever that accent is in the nominative, it wants to stay there. Uh, unlike the verb, remember verbs, the accent is recessive. It will go back as far as it possibly can. Uh, the accent in a noun will stay wherever it wants to, unless something forces it towards the back of the noun. Okay? <clears throat> so, uh, you know, just like with verbs, uh, just like all accents, they can only be on the last three syllables. Those are the only possibilities. Uh, but natural pronunciation of Greek verbs, of Greek nouns rather, uh, has a place where the accent wants to stay. I'm going to break it down into basically three different uh, sets of rules for accenting nouns. And this is going to be determined by uh, whether the accent originally in the nominative singular shows up on the third syllable from the end, on the last syllable, or on the second from the end. So let's start with that, uh, the accent originally uh, on the third from the end. Right? And the key here is that accents can move toward the end of a word. Uh, this rule applies for nouns with accents on the third syllable from the end. All right, I'm going to give you the rules and then we'll sort of show you some examples. So if the accent is first on the third syllable from the end, as you look at the nominative, and there's the, syllable, uh, the accent, it's going to be acute, right? The third syllable from the end can only be an acute accent. Uh, it's possible that it will shift one syllable towards the end, to the second syllable. So, we start with the accent on the nominative singular, third from the end. And now, ask yourself, look at the last syllable of the vowel, uh, of the, the last syllable of that word. Has the length of that vowel changed from short to long. All right, remember, if it's uh, in order for it to be on the third from the last syllable, it has to be short to begin with. But if it's changed to long, then the accent must move one syllable toward the back, to the second from the end, just like with your verbs. Remember with the verb, uh, let's see, do case, that the accent, because this is long, it can only be on the second to the end. It could not be here. Same thing with nouns. Right? If, the, if that last syllable is long, there's no way it can be on the third syllable. If it's not changed, then it's going to stay on that third syllable. So let's look at some examples. Thalata, C. So here's the nominative. I've given you the nominative in all of these situations. We're going to take it, uh, change thalata to a genitive singular, thalates. So this is a short alpha. It has to be because the accent is here. Thalates, this is long. Because it's long, the accent is going to shift to the second to the end. It's got to move forward. <clears throat> thalata to thalaton, this is a short alpha, and therefore it's going to stay on that accent. It can, right? It's, it's perfectly it's going to stay, the accent will stay on the third syllable because one, two, three, it's perfectly comfortable staying there. And it wants to. So thalaton, that's the accusative singular. Uh, and then we get what's a very strange situation in nouns, thalata to thalatai. You might initially say, ah, that's a diphthong. Diphthongs are supposed to be long. But the nominative plural alpha iota, and in the second declension we're going to come across omicron iota, oi, so i and oi, these are short for accentuation purposes. Short for accents. So because it's short, we're going to keep it on the third from the end. Short, one, two, three. So that's if the accent is on that third from the 
last syllable. Now, <clears throat> the accent can change from an acute to a circumflex. Uh, let's take a look at nouns whose accent is on the last syllable. So this rule applies for nouns with accents on the last syllable. Start with the accent on the nominative singular, and it will be an acute. All right? I, it will always be an acute. And just remember this simple rule. Nominative or accusative, acute. The other's circumflex. Okay, nominative, accusative, acute. The rest, circumflex. So, let's look at time, honor. Time, there's our accent on the final syllable. Timeis, this is not nominative or accusative, so it becomes circumflex. Time, there's our nominative. Timein, accusative, acute. Time, there's our accent on the last syllable. Timeis, date of plural, not nominative or accusative. Timeis. Nominative, accusative, cute, acute, and you've got uh, the rule for when the accent is on the final syllable. Now, the third situation. Accents can change from acute to circumflex or back again, vice versa. Uh, and this, the situation here, applies for nouns with accents on the second to the last syllable. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that a circumflex, uh, there, there are a couple of overlapping ideas here. Uh, if your last, you know, we'll look at the last two syllables, we'll do it uh, sort of pictographically. Uh, the last syllable could be long or it could be short. If it's long, then the accent here must be acute because accents sort of follow this idea of only taking up three beats to, an, to a, a, a noun or to a, a, a word. So if this is long, it's going to take up two of these, the accent, so it's sort of like a one, two, three, the accent on the second syllable from the end. But if this is short, then this accent, if it's circumflex, and this is one, we can use a circumflex because the circumflex takes two beats to fill up. So if this final syllable is short, the second from the end will be a circumflex. If the final syllable is long, the accent will be an acute. Right? So, again, we're going to look to the last syllable to determine whether this accent should be an acute or a circumflex. Now, what are the rules? We start with the accent on the nominative singular. So if it is acute, that means that the final syllable is long, like I said here, and the accent will only change to a circumflex in the nominative plural. Why is this? Because that nominative plural ends in alpha iota. That's short for accentuation purposes, and it becomes this pattern. If it's circumflex, that means that the final so if it's circumflex, that means that the final syllable is short. That's this situation. And the accent will change to an acute if the ending becomes long. Right? This may sound a little complicated, but you'll get it after some time. Let's take a look at some examples. Hora, line, uh, uh, land. Quora, right? So this accent that's acute indicates, ah, this is a long alpha. But because of the alpha iota being short for accentuation purposes, that means we're going to put an acute, uh, or a circumflex over that omega. So it shifts from an acute to a circumflex, but only in the nominative uh, plural. Musa, muse, notice this circumflex over the diphthong, that indicates that this is a short alpha. One, two, three. So, what happens in the data plural, for example, musais, this short becomes long, it takes up two of our beats, this circumflex must become an acute. Well, what about the accusative singular, musan? Well, this is short to begin with. We already described that there. This alpha, the musan, the accusative, is also short. So we're going to keep the accent circumflex. It will only change to an acute if we have a lengthened vowel. Now, hopefully you've got those three rules down, those three situations down. 
Let me add one little thing that will make at least one case very easy for you. That is, the accent on the genitive plural is always a circumflex over the final omega. Every first declension noun will end in the genitive plural will end in own. So whether it's doxon, teachings, fame, glory, um, or seas of the seas, phalatone, it doesn't matter where the accent started. Remember in phalata, it started on the alpha. In the genitive plural, it will be on the omega. Good luck.